the perfect run-up to the for one thing, the negative emotions. Uh, we are really pissed off on the one hand. On the other hand, the room is open. Where am I? Where do I want to go? But emotions, feelings, and everything that we live is also stored in our body. That's why I'm a huge fan of uh, movement because it helped me to get inside my own forces, no matter where you are. Get out of the bed, get, get, you know, flush the toilet and get back to the room. And the camera may be placed in such a way that you can see everything. Movement preparation that will help you in your everyday life to get a better posture, body posture. So get up on your feet 15 to 20 minutes and in them to push up your pulse. And we will initiate the movement. Let me improve with those who are ready we are standing on our feet relax the entire body breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth make your make noises breathe in all make noises and an athletic posture Slightly bent forward like in football. Push up your body tension. Clap your body. Make it strong. And, and again, hopping. Hop into the lower football position. And deep. Down, down, tension. And hopping again. And I saw some men are together in the apartment. Try to jump in such a way that you do not frustrate your neighbors too much. So you can also activate your muscles. It's better also for your joints. Of course, you may get louder. When I say down, you will shout, who? Are you ready? One, I say, who? Stay in this position. In the lower position, you may even swear back uh, from one side to the other. Then if you want to move upwards again, give me a thumbs up, stay in this posture. And then once I say up, then we will jump up, up. Okay. Relax your legs, uh, right leg, left leg. Breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. Now, I see in the chest in, well, as we are sitting too much time, we are constrained. First, the dancer, the dancing man. Imagine, uh, we would embrace a tree and we move to the left. Uh, see the heel moving upwards, the elbow moving upwards to the right, left. Right, left, right, left, one, two. Continue, breathing in and out. Okay, stop at the center. So we open through the twist. Now the stretching, it's an important movement. It may also be very helpful in other situations. Uh, the hip, you see the pelvis, it's a slightly bent backwards. So, a hollow curve in my backbone. Okay, relax. Uh, push up your pelvis. That would be one. Relax, two. You activate uh, these muscles for the lumbar part of your backbone. Only the pelvis, only the pelvis. And then you round your upper back and um, your shoulder blades to an outward. We stay stiff at, around the pelvis and we open only the chest. Breathe out round your upper neck. Breathe in, breathe out, round your upper back.
back round while breathing out. Okay, shake your uh, legs and arms, go so hopping back and forth. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth <laughs> with noises. Watch out, be with me. Down. Who? Hold it, hold the position. Very focused. Up. And clap twice. Who? Down. Up. Clap your hands twice. Down. Up. Down. Up. Cool. So I, I'm getting warmer by the minute. One corrective exercise. The first one was a move preparation. I will explain all this also in German. It sounds like shit in German. So, corrective exercise, lasting only four minutes. You can take it into your everyday life. The one, first one is a corrective exercise. Uh, that's the standing scale, because uh, the problem of most athletes is too little power in the buttocks. And uh, so it's like lifting weights, uh, as we did in the last conference. But not everybody has weights, but we can do smart exercise with our body on one leg. Now we go down, okay, the other screen. So this is the standing scale. Well, the sound will be running through the cell phone only. Hold this posture and then get upright again. And you may also change the leg and Again, the camera from the other side. So the head is pulling me towards uh, the forward meeting. So the shoulder blades are hugging each other. So this exercise, agility, mobility, force, stability, activation, and no additional weight. is and The next day, if you do several repeats, you will have muscle ache. So, uh, another corrective exercise. We are standing on the left leg. Uh, we uh, uh, running, walking, passing, trundling. So, but also the sprint. So, an extreme position, posture. And now, we will move backwards with one leg. Fitness for life. It's not bodybuilding. Once I say up, up. And I need to work. So, my thighs are working, everything. Yes, down again and upwards again. Cool. And down. Breathe in and up. Now we switch the legs. First we did on the left leg. So our personal trainer will count the repeat. And I had to work on now I'm on the other leg, the same exercise, diagonally opposite. So, so the left leg is up on the right arm, diagonally. So breathe in while we move down and up again. Don't get frustrated. Don't be disappointed. So I am also vacillating back and forth and swaying back and forth. It's always a challenge. And up again. Just give the best of yourself and up again. And once again, and up. So relax, shake your legs. It's good if you know, when your legs work a lot. If you can't do the exercise, don't worry about this. There's something. Now, four minutes workout with a timer. So many people say, I have got no time. 20 seconds power, 10 seconds power. Tabata is the system. So four exercises for force, physical force and stamina. The knee bend, so the bastus medialis, this, which is a, the upper head of the bastus medialis. This is the only muscle that can produce testosterone I need more testosterone through physical exercise, through knee lifts, you can do this. Okay, let's do 
knee bending together. Breathe and go down and move up again. So, physical tension, body tension. So, down and up again. If you do this at the gym, once they reopen, you will really look great. And So make sure the heels uh, are always on the floor. We will have also an even more difficult version. You always have the option between easier options and more difficult ones. Uh, make the more difficult one only if you have done the easier one. So exercise number two is this one. We have prepared the sprint with movement preparation. So you see how everything is linked together. You can get as fast as you may. The faster you get, the more tiresome will it be. Exercise number three. This is called the upper arm posture. So, and we generate tension in the buttocks you don't have to so get your uh, your back muscles tense and you can also move up and down very cool very cool this is uh, the variant number two and now the variant number three that would be the extended step Step, extended step. So, very cool. Okay. If you find this too difficult, only if you can do it in a really safe manner. You could combine it with a jump. Again, with a diagonal orientation of arms and legs. That would be number three. And exercise number four. This is the classical exercise. It's utterly okay. If you do it on your legs, uh, you should be smart. Uh, don't ask too much when uh, you carry out this push up or press up. If it's too easy, you can even do it on just one arm. These are the three exercises. Uh, Four minutes all in all, 20 seconds of power, 10 seconds of break. So this is damn short. If you haven't had your breakfast yet, if you notice that the warm-up has tied you, please be very soft to yourself. Extend your breaks. I do not want you to overheat. This title is self-care. We have a, so many people have not understood in the fitness area how you increase your efficiency you must not kill yourself again some people that kill yourself no 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 it's the, i hope uh, you are ready i see myself on the two screens but my feeling is good otherwise uh, some of the moderators would certainly drop me a line if you uh, want to drink sip some water no problem only four minutes. Uh, if you are fit and healthy, use the one variant that you have chosen. Okay. In three, two, one seconds. Action. Be knee bending. Knee bend. With jump, if you wish. Keep it up. Okay. 11, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Two, one. Ah, okay. Ten seconds of break. Down to the. Now we have the posture on the lower arms. If you wish, move upwards and downwards. Up, or just keep this posture. Yes, uh, some of you are participating. Three, two, one. Okay, the next exercise. 
This is the extended step forward. Four, three, two, one, uh, action. If it's too easy for you, do this one. Yes. I showed you five exercises, I just realized. Okay, I, I, I. next time we are doing the sprint. Okay, breathe in and out. The fourth exercise is the push-up. Okay, four, three, uh, one, off we go. You can also rest on the knees for the push-up, if you wish. Okay, 10 seconds break. Okay, and now the knee bend start. Off we go, knee bend. Okay, one. Okay, if you say, okay. I'm breathing heavily. Yes, that's okay. I'm breathing heavily as well. So you could slow down a bit without the jump. I have also the privilege to give a short talk about uh, feeding yourself the right way. Okay, now our sprint. You don't have to talk uh, after. So go to the limit. Hop, 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 hop. Lift up your knees and keep your upright posture. Go, 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 go. Ten seconds. Go, 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 go. Okay. Okay, now I can watch you. Okay. Ooh. Four, three, two, one. And break. Pause. Exercise number three. That would be, again, uh, the posture on the lower arms. So, okay. Knee to the inside. Men. Last before last exercise. Seven, six, five, four, three, one. Okay. Red. Last set, best set. I'm. I. The last set are those push-ups. Once again, give everything. So last set, best set, last set, best set. Give the best that you've got to 12 seconds, 10, 9 seconds, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I high five, uh, virtual high five, 3, 2, 1 in the camera. I hope somebody took a screenshot. Okay, now it's time to... Soften your breath. Uh, cool. You have done something for you. You can tap your shoulders. Some of the emotions that you have triggered have already evaporated. And look for the... Okay. Now you can get a towel. You get something to drink. You can relax. You may watch my presentation in a deep squat posture, or that's uh, the cool thing here. We have enough space here. Sitting around is not the right thing. I have also a desk where I can uh, remain in my feet. Uh, next point, a uh, short video. Then we will plunge into the matter. Andreas Ulrich, I move you. I, tomorrow at uh, half past 10, we are doing the same thing, somehow different. I am looking forward to meeting you again tomorrow. If anything was possible, where would you want to go? Andreas, you inspire such a lot, a lot of people. How do you do that? Well, I like to learn, I like to grow, and I just have this lust for life. And I also know how things can be if they were different. Are you always motivated? No, not at all. And again, motivation is not something that just comes to me just like that. No, I have to work for it. I have to invest time and energy 
um, to get motivated. And I have to ask myself time and again where I want to go. Have you always been like that? No, no, not at all. There was a time when I was ill and weak and overweight. And when my world was a really small one, when I didn't really enjoy my life. How did you manage to change your life? Well, it just became more and more extreme. My father died when I was 13 and I took on too many responsibilities at home because I thought that's the only thing I could do. And that led to, well, what we would now call a burnout. So there were two factors that came in. First of all, I wanted to get out of that situation um, and I wanted to discover the world um, because with the books I'd read and the movies I'd seen, I knew that there was a world out there that must be fun. Was there a decisive moment for you? Well, that was definitely when I was 17 years old and I, was, I hiked, I took a hiking tour from Munich to Venice. So I crossed the Alps, the mountains. So while my friends had their holidays and well, just in the park or in a public swimming pool, I crossed the Alps. And during that time, my spirit and my body grew. And I noticed how change is possible. Is that why you're so independent? Is that why you became an entrepreneur? Well, the reason why I became a freelancer and entrepreneur is um, because I knew how unfree you can feel. And I didn't want to have this feeling ever again. So after school, I traveled to Australia, for example, and this really made me so curious about life. It increased my lust for life. I saw there are so many different ways to lead my life. What do you do today? Well, I work as a personal trainer and coach like I did 11 years ago already. And um, I try to help people also enjoy their lives. Um, but in the books I read, I also figured out how great it is to move people, to, to get people into motion. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's not enough to just, well, uh, do that on my own. And that's why I join forces with other people who work in the same sector, but also people who work in other fields. Everybody who wants to move people, who want to get um, people in motion. Are you very close to that already, to that objective? Thank you very much for granting me this little break, a chance to <laughs> breathe some air. Now, by the way, if you have technical issues, um, um, you know, or um, if you're on the iPhone, please be aware that you can either have the gallery view or just uh, me on the screen. And I will put on the headphones now as well to make sure I don't hear any outside noises and you can hear me even better. But I think it already works currently. So I'd like to show you this slide. In a way, this is a question that Andreas already asked. This is a question that is going to be with us throughout the entire weekend, I suppose. One question is, why are you here today? And then, who's the most important person in your life? Why are you there? Why do you exist at all? What is it that you can give to the world? And what if you had more power? Because if you really feel like shit, if your body feels completely weak, if you don't have any power anymore, then you're really in trouble. Even if you have a cool vision, if you, even if, you're great, if you have great plans, it will be hard for you to put them into practice. Um, it took me quite a while um, before I was able to assume responsibility for myself. I read books like Lewis L. Hay, um, about affirmation and psychology. And I always thought my mother, she does something wrong. Um, and I saw, uh, I heard the story recently of another man who also lost his father when he was 13 years old, exactly like I did. So the way it started for me was when I said, okay, the situation is like shit. Quite a lot of things have happened to me that are actually unfair. But this development where I got better again, um, where I really, Notice the solutions that were all around me, um, that I was able to get help. Um, this development started for me when I said, okay, I have to make a change. I have to see what I can change. And if you have a slip of paper, just jot down a few notes. If you have some answers to these questions you see here on the screen, 
jot them down, write them down. I'll put on the headphones now, and then we can go on. Okay, this should be working. Yes. What happened to me back then was my health was really terrible. My physical condition was terrible. I was afraid to go out and play football with the other kids because every time I had a certain amount of physical exercise, I mean, it was not really extremely tough. Um, you know, it was not really intensive sports that we did. But as soon as I had a bit of physical exercise, my immune system gave up and I fell ill. But of course, this was also a mental thing. You know, lots of um, speakers during this conference who would talk about mental aspects. And in my case, mental aspects also played a role. I just couldn't imagine what it's like to be 100% healthy, whatever 100% healthy may mean. And then this key moment for me was when my father had died and, well, I wanted to undergo therapy. My mother didn't want me to. She said everything is fine, but I didn't want that. You see, I didn't think about suicide, but still back then I said, nothing seems to make any sense. I can't do anything. I'm ill all the time. I have a headache all the time. I feel sick. So against the will of my mother, I decided to undergo a therapy. And who was there uh, sitting opposite me on the sofa? An elderly gentleman who mainly listened to me. And you know, whenever I had doubts like, can I travel to Australia? Can I walk from Munich to Venice? Who will take care of my mother? Um, you know, whenever I, whenever I thought about these things, the gentleman always said, well, why don't you do it? Go ahead, do it. And I said, well, I don't know if it's going to work out. And he said, well, you never know if things are going to work out. Just give it a try. And I said, am I allowed to do this? And he said, yes, of course. So that was an exciting experience for me. And then in 2008, I walked from Munich all the way to Venice with a friend of mine. And all the all th thoughts that I had in my head, they occurred again. They popped up again. The night when we started uh, our hike, I was not able to fall asleep. I knew I have to sleep. That's important for my immune system. So I was afraid. I was afraid of my fears because they kept me from sleeping. And if you've ever been afraid of being afraid, afraid of your fears, then you know it's difficult to solve the problem. But still, we walked on. And, um, you know, this is one important thing. If you have health issues, I cannot ask you to have physical exercises. But back then, I knew that in my case, it was mainly a mental problem. Um, it was something that was just going on in my head. And that's an ex interesting experience. I think you all probably have experienced a situation where there was a big stone, a big barrier in front of you. You were able to overcome that. It's not an easy thing to do. But why did I did that at all? Why did I do the whole thing back then? Well, it was a question of transformation. Over the past two or three years, again, um, um, over the past two or three years, I had dealt with the topic of maleness because my father died and I didn't really have any role models. But something that motivates me all the time is, well, this urge that I feel. And I think it's an urge that many men have, this urge for freedom. Now, what does freedom mean? One aspect of freedom is knowing myself, being able to take on responsibility for myself. And later on, when we talk about sports, you know, then uh, the idea is not that I want to feel pain, that I have exercise, physical exercise, despite of my pain. Sports is really just about getting to know your body. And there are many problems that we have with our bodies that have grown over a long time. Many men feel they are victims because their shoulder aches or because the immune system doesn't work properly. But knowing what I know today, um, of course, there are things that happen in your life. There is something like fate, there are fateful moments, but if your back aches a bit, then you have to say, okay, this is tough, but you've worked a long time to make sure that you have a back ache at all. Now, this may hurt in that moment, but you see, you're sitting there on uh, your sofa all the time or at the computer all the time during this weekend. Now, this may hurt, but um, your body needs support to get out of that situation again. And to me, freedom is not just about, well, having a healthy, stable immune system, having the strength to do the things that I, uh, that I want to do. But when I say strength, I don't just mean you're able to lift weight, but also to lift uh, everyday items, you know, 
um, a box or whatever. Or when your partner, when your girlfriend is there, you're able to lift her up without feeling pain afterwards. You're able to do certain things that you want to do. Having a certain amount of stability, so to speak. And to me, freedom also really means that I am able to do what I want to do and that I don't have to do what other people want me to do. So what kept me from doing all of that? Well, one problem for me was school. I'm curious to hear if Gerard Hüttner is going to talk about that. I think that was one big topic in his uh, recent presentation. I really didn't feel free at all at school. Um, but apart from that, also self-doubts and health issues. They are things that limited my freedom. Um, of course, there are many different ways to tackle problems that you have, but our cells have a memory. So when you do something on a mental level as well, and I really work a lot here in my head mentally, but I always try to, 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 to transform that into, well, uh, emotions and also into physical exercises. I know we have lots of men here who have already tried lots of crazy things, um, banana boxes, just one buzzword here. So yes, there are interesting methods, there are interesting uh, exercises you can do to make yourself stronger. It's not just about weightlifting, but you see, doing physical exercise to become stronger, that is part of a healthy maleness to, for example, have an upright posture. Um, you know, this means that, this does not mean that everything is forbidden. For example, last night I had a bit of wine. I hardly ever drink alcohol. Last night I did drink a bit of wine. That was really a funny experience for me. Um, but still, also being together physically, um, being close physically, shouting, being angry, you know, all of these things are related to our bodies. And we can really do such a lot of holistic transformation if we work with our bodies. But you see, um, I focus, I'm now focusing on um, food, the diet, biohacking. That's a field that I've been focusing on for more than 12 years. So I've worked as a freelancer ever since I was 18. I started as a personal coach, a personal trainer, and people trusted me because they know that I, because they felt that I know what I'm talking about. They paid me for that. In parallel with that job, I also studied uh, sports, sports sciences, sports studies. Um, and I really found out about this connection between the mental aspects and what the body needs. And um, as far as training goes, I asked myself, how can I offer you the best possible benefit using the internet, this digital medium? Uh, and I think in a way the internet is perfect for that. I mean, I don't have to explain to you how to do each of these individual exercises that we could do in theory, because you find lots of information on that if you just watch a few YouTube tutorials, but I'd like to give you an understanding of the main pillars, first of all, of my training approach, but also um, of the main pillars of the approach of other people who work in this field. It's not like experts in this field disagree and that everybody will tell you something different. No, um, there are a few things that experts really seem to agree on. Maybe not all of them, but most of them. So here I'd like to give you an overview Um, movement preparation, this is what we did in the beginning, like curving or bending um, the spine. So what does movement preparation mean? It means uh, exercises that you can do to prepare movements. So these can be individual exercises. If something hurts, if some part of your body hurts, then you can try to find out what kinds of movements help you uh, to feel better. Movement preparation also means that, for example, when you have to sit at work or when you're driving your car and you're, sit you're sitting there all the time like this, you know, um, then it doesn't make any sense, um, for example, to go riding your bicycle in order to have physical exercise because it's the same posture, the same position again. Um, so the idea be behind movement preparation is to help the body have natural movements again. And of course you have to prepare it for that. Where does pain come from? Um, you see, that's no magic. When you have pain in your body, you don't feel good. So if you, curve your spine like this, and then you try to lift your arm, you will feel how difficult that is. So obviously you worked very hard and this eventually gave you a pain in the shoulder. So a corrective exercise, that's the second bullet point here. Um, and um, as I said, as a trainer, I'm not allowed to um, 
treat um, any pain, of course, obviously, because I'm not a physician. But of course, we can train a few muscles and see what happens. Then the next part is learning fundamental movement patterns. And you can see that even on the screen, we have English expressions, even in German, because that's the way we, uh, these are te the technical terms. Um, so these are fundamental movement patterns, like for example, deep or very low knee bend, where uh, the bum almost touches the ground. So that is a basic fundamental movement that you can make. Um, even little, children's, little, little children, little infants, what they do first is they crawl before they learn to walk. But of course, we walk now, and that's why some of the muscles that we used as a little child are no longer used very much. So if we want to build them up again, it makes sense to crawl, for example. Um, so this very low knee bend uh, is also an interesting because I, I don't know if you've ever traveled to Asia, but there are six, people in Asia who are 60 and over who really sit, are sitting in this position, you know, the low or the deep knee bend for half an hour, maybe having a cigarette. And then when the bus arrives, they can stand up and get on the bus. Now, if you look at Europeans, hardly any European is able to do that. It's something that we lose, it's an ability that we lose. Um, you know, when you have a look on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, you can see crazy exercises, but it's not necessary, it's just the knee bends that we did, the lunges that we did. Um, and um, so if we do that, then we already have covered quite a lot. We can make a movement like this. We can press upwards and we can press forwards with the arms like I just did. So if we um, have this basic um, training exercise, we just need uh, something for the knees and something for the core and then pressing and pulling. Um, rowing, for example, this would be like pulling and pushing horizontally. And that is very important to me, no matter what parts of your body you are training, you have to bear in mind, if you want a holistic approach, you have to think about the different directions of the movements you can make. And on that basis, you can really build up your athletic body in a holistic way. Also build up muscles, of course, because for many people, um, the objective is to look good when they are naked as well. And there's nothing wrong about this goal. But there are many bodybuilders, I personally know, who are totally hollow inside. Um, and that's it, you see, when I move, I want to make sure I move into the right direction. So the main questions you have to ask in the beginning is not what am I going to do, how am I going to do it, but why do I want to do this? What is my goal for my training, for my uh, workout? When have I achieved my objective? What is my job objective? That's the question you have to ask yourself first. So that's the movement preparation, exercises that support your vitality, that reduce tensions and activate muscles. For example, the muscles of the bum. One example. We did some movement preparations a few minutes ago, so you can pick the ones that you want. Um, of course, um, these were movement preparations that I selected for you because most members of our society would benefit from these preparations because quite often our posture, our position is not perfect. And when we have a look at the corrective exercises, then you can see um, there's no point in uh, trying to build up force on an unstable basis. First of all, you need stability. Suppose you took an engine from a Porsche and you build it or you try to, um, to install it in a very small broken car, it's not going to work. So first of all, um, you need to create a stable basis. Um, of course, you have to leave your comfort zone, you have to grow. Um, maybe it's so hard that it's going to hurt and then that's a good sign. Um, but of course, if you notice that, uh, that your knee hurts all the time, look for a good physiotherapist and you can look for good corrective exercises as well. And so many of them are available for free on the internet. And then training, um, athletics versus visual impression. Now there's an expression that um, um, comes from functional training, you know, athletics versus visual impression. If you do not only want, want to look strong and muscular, but if you want to build up the muscles that help you to climb stairs and lift heavy, um, weights in your everyday life, then the form follows the function. That's the important uh, approach. The function is to wait, uh, to lift heavy weights, to be able to climb the stairs, and the form will follow. And one reason why I think that training is so important is um, that training or workout allows you to perceive yourself in space. That's what I said. 
perceiving yourself in space. One way to do that is to do dance-like exercises, acrobatics with your partner or with other men. Having exercises together is a really exciting experience. And um, John gave me an interesting tip. He said, you should have exercises, physical exercise um, with men around you. If men are around you, something will happen to you. Maybe it's a biochemical thing that goes on. Maybe if there's a group of men, there will be more testosterone flowing. I don't know. Um, but also a question of, it's also a question of competition and challenges that you are uh, confronted with as soon as there are men around you. And I think we all have this competitive spirit. We all want to be confronted with challenges. We all want to get out of our comfort zone. So I say, yes, you can have all of that very well when you do physical exercises with other men. And another little story here, a friend from me, a friend of mine, Oscar here on the left, um, it's a friend of mine. And in 2017, he said, should we run the New York mar Marathon? And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't really know uh, what to expect because marathon is normally not my main focus. And um, I, maybe I was not well prepared also with regards to my body weight. So we have two friends of mine here, Oscar and Timmy, actually. And the idea to, well, to push our limits together, I, I found that very interesting. I said, okay, let's do it. And then another transformation occurred because I really pushed my limits there. And um, first of all, what we did was, um, you see, Oscar, he also participated in the Ironman and everything. And um, so what we did was, before we ran the Mad Marathon, we had a look at the video. We watched the video. and. Um, and um, this was a video that I saw again later on, and um, it was the same experience. I noticed um, with the help of this video, I was going to be able to, um, to translate the things that I'd learned during my workout into other fields of my life. Um, Self-efficiency, that's how I call this. Um, so that's something I experienced. If you have made similar experiences, you can write that in the chat just in order to motivate each other mutually. And um, while you're typing your messages in the chat window, I'd like to show you maybe a video. Because I think we all, or most of us, do not really, uh, we do not really seize our potential. We do not feel what we would actually be able to do. So when I'm watching this video again now with you, Coach, how strong is rest of you this year? Well, they're too strong for us. Well, have you already given up our competition next Friday? Well, I wouldn't give up already if I knew we had a chance next Friday. Come over here, Brock, and you as well, Jeremy. Am I in trouble now? Not yet. So you do the same exercise again, but this time you really do your best. All the way over there until the 30 yard line? No, I think you're going to do uh, 50 yards. And at least try your best. You have to promise you're trying your best. You'll give all you can. You'll give your very best. Yes, I'll do my best. Okay. But blindfolded. Why? Well, because I don't want you to give up in the middle, even though you could go on all the way to the 50-yard line. So on your knees and Jeremy on top of him. Jeremy, make sure you won't fall down. Hold on tightly. Okay, Brooke, there you go. Lift your feet off the uh, your knees off the ground, just on your hands and feet, a bit further to the left. Yes, exactly like that. Now, really give your best. Go on, Brooke. Go on, go on. Keep going. Keep going. Looks good. A bit further to the left. Great, Brock. I'll never do the 50 yards. Go on, keep going, Brock. Have I already crossed the 20-yard line? Forget about the 20 yards. You wanted to give your best, didn't you? Don't stand still. You can still go on. You have to go on. Don't stand still until you've given it all. Go on. Go on. Keep going, Brock, and lift your knees off the ground. Go on. Go on. You promised you were going to do your best, your very best. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Go on and your knees off the ground. And you only stop when you've done it all, when you've really given your very best. Make an effort. Come on, show me how strong you are. Keep going, keep going. Show me what you can do. 
no weakness. Keep going, keep going, and on and on. Give it all. It hurts. <laughs> come on, come on, go on. This is not the best you can do. Go on. He's so heavy. I know he's heavy. I don't have any strength anymore. Well, you have a lot of strength in your body. You can negotiate with your body because it still has more strength. So use it. Show me what you can do. Don't give up. It hurts. I know it hurts. Otherwise, everybody could do that. But it's about your will. Come on, it's not that far anymore. Come on, keep going. It burns. My arms burn. Well, it doesn't matter. Go on. You're running with your heart, not with your arms. Keep going. You, you promised me you were going to keep going. Don't give up. I can't. Well, of course you can go on. Go on. Give me more. Give me more. Go on. Keep going. Another 20 steps, that's all. Keep going. Keep going, Brock. Do what you promised. Do your best. Your very best. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Don't disappoint me now. Don't disappoint me. You can do it. You promised, you promised you were not going to give up. You must not give up. Come on, Brock, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Keep going, keep going, just a little bit more. Just a few more steps, keep going. Well, I can't. Well, of course you can, of course you can. Just a few more steps, a few more steps. Come on, Brock, don't give up, don't give up. Keep going. Open your eyes. This is the end zone, the 50 yards. Yes, I hope you can hear me again. If not, please send me a message in the chat. But I think you can hear me again. Nobody is writing any message, so obviously you can hear me again. Great. Um, I think whoever has had such a challenge, I think you all had some, must have had some kind of similar challenge in your lives where you really had to go all the way and push your limits even though you didn't want to so we all know this kind of experience this kind of moment and when we do sports we can learn a lot for life we can learn a lot about focus we can learn about learn a lot, lot about discipline and well being with ourselves and i always try to make it clear that of course you have to leave your comfort zone of course you have to try to make progress no pain no gain you won't will not grow without that but um i mean i know you i know men and i know how it normally goes in the beginning when you start, start your workout you're super motivated you really do your best you start but then the shoulder aches the knees aches the back aches and then you stop again and you try again you start again and then you stop again you quit again you start again and then you quit again Now, some of you may not want to hear this, but this is not a very smart approach. So when I talk about workout, when I talk about a diet, I'm not talking um, about that kind of approach, but I'm talking about an approach where you, first of all, build up a solid, decent basis. And it's also important to get to, get to know yourself better. And the better you know yourself, the better you can perceive yourself in a space. For example, if you have a leading, if you're a leading manager, if you have to lead a team, um, then I'm really sure that there is a clear connection. Um, you have to have a sense of yourself. Where is my position in this room, in this space? How do I feel myself? And um, all of that is related to your body. And here we have a slide, it's a summary. Posture, posture, posture. Um, I have a Facebook group, it's called Ich bewege mich, I move myself. And objectives are strength, stamina, flexibility, and speed. You see, when I want to get the bus, then I have to run and I can't accept the situation where I'm not able to run to catch the bus. Of course, some people are handicapped. They have a handicap or they have something like asthma, which is of course a restriction and of course that's shit. But still, try to start your search. Try to do as much good to yourself as possible because you will really benefit from that. And then of course, many men do work out because they want to look good when they are naked. And that's absolutely okay. They want more muscles, less fat. Because, and it's perfectly fine because that, again, is good for your self-esteem. But the objective has to be, I want to be strong and I want to be healthy. Because if the only objective is to look good, then typically you have this short 
long-term approach and will be unhappy with that. So more muscles, less fat. I wrote my bachelor's thesis on sprint interval training. And if you look at a sprinter and how athletic he looks compared with a marathon runner, so the sprinter, the runner, you know, he, he really has what I think is a prototype of a healthy athletic body. And if you have warmed up, if you have done your corrective exercises, if you don't have any uh, pain in the knees and shoulders anymore because you've done your corrective exercises for two weeks or so, then it would be cool to sprint as fast as you can for two seconds and then to reduce the speed for 90 seconds and do this exercise like six or maybe even 10 times. This is such a dynamic experience, such a dynamic exercise, and it's also good training, good workout for the muscles. So that's an occasion to kill several birds with one stroke, and overall it's just going to take like 20 minutes. Um, and the four minutes of Tabata that we did in the very beginning, this would be like two rounds, 20 seconds of power, 10 seconds of pause. Um, again, you know, I know that from many parents who are now at home because of the corona crisis, and they have to do the homeschooling for the children. And they sometimes say, I don't have any time for anything else. But that's not true. That's just a pretext. It's an excuse because, I mean, four minutes, everybody will have four free minutes. Maybe you can integrate this into your morning routine, just these four minutes Tabata every morning. You know, this is something I think is so, that I think is so important. And I've seen so many people uh, in my workout and training and coaching sessions who were not a, uh, willing to do mental work, but still they were unhappy because they felt pain and they were unhappy with the way they looked. And that's why they started to open up. I can think of an entrepreneur here, I know, um, he's 65 um, years old, but um, he, and he likes to enjoy pizza and red wine, um, but still he is in good shape now. So he's able to indulge in things like wine and pizza, but still he also has a six pack, he's in good shape. And I also recommended him a few books about spirituality and leadership. So the question is where do you start a transformation process? Maybe with the body, maybe with your spirit, maybe you have to be one man amongst many men. Try for yourself what you want. And when we talk about self-care, some people mutilate themselves with the workout they do, whereas others mutilate themselves with their diet and they don't even notice that. But I think many things will work out fine if the basic elements are there, if the foundations are there. And I know that one topic that irritates, this is one topic that irritates many people because there are so many different pieces of advice there, so many different experts there. But still, when I think about the experts I cooperate with, then I think we agree on many things. We agree on the basis that needs to be there. Now you can choose um, what kind of diet you want, for example. It can be vegan, it can be carnivore, which means you only eat meat. Both is possible, both can work, as long as you do that with certain awareness, as long as you make sure you only um, choose foodstuffs of good quality. Um, you should not um, be eating heavily processed food, but real foodstuffs, you know, um, that is good for you. So when you've found your approach, one that seems to work for you, well, then you can compare, but um, I think never change a running system, never change a running team. Um, you know, that's, these are slogans that you use quite a lot in sports, but I think they are true. If something works for you, then stick to it. Um, and um, when I talk about the diet, I normally say, try to eat colorful food, which means there should be uh, vegetables in it. Now, when you think of colorful food, you think many people think of fruit, not of vegetables. But if you think about the way we grew up about our traditions, then I have to say for a long time, I thought fruit is healthy. Fruits are healthy. Of course, they are not unhealthy. I think that um, if the food is not processed, it will always be healthy to a certain extent. Yes, but in the past, we, um, in the past, long ago, people didn't eat as many fruits as we do now. Now, um, fruit also contains a lot of sugar, and sugar is not always ideal for our metabolism and our hormonal balance. So you should not consume too much sugar. I used to eat lots of bananas, for example. They contain a lot of fructose, a lot of sugar. And so I had to develop a conscious way to consume fruits. Now, the second question is, 
meat or vegan? I think this is an ethical question. I think from a health perspective, um, both will be um, successful. Well, I mean, I have to say the Game Changer um, film was a good um, advertising campaign for the vegan industry, but in a way, some of the statements made there were not true. That does not mean that I'm against vegan diets. I had a vegan diet for six months because I read Rudiger Dijk's book on peace food. That's the title of the book, Peace Food. I think, I, you know, so I used to say meat is not good for the environment, it makes animals suffer. And that's why I had a vegan diet for six months, but I didn't feel good. I just didn't feel good with it. Just like some people don't feel good if they consume meat or too much meat, or some people don't want to eat any meat for ethical reasons. So that is, well, a decision that you have to make for yourself. And then there's paleo diet, keto diet, or low carb diet. These are different types of diet where um, you do not consume a lot of carbohydrates. Um, the largest number of carbohydrates we consume today are highly processed and they also lead to an insulin response. Every time the body releases insulin, you know, insulin is a hormone. Um, and if we eat too much, or if we don't have enough physical exercise, then this means uh, the insulin causes us to put on weight to build up fat tissue. Now it's absolutely okay to have a certain amount of fat tissue and we don't need to have a six pack all the time because that can also cause us mental stress and genet genetically we're not programmed that way anyway. So having a, a low fat uh, content and a six pack all the time is tough for the body as well. But the higher the um, fat tissue share in our body, the higher our estrogen production. Estrogen is the counterpart of the adversary of testosterone. So it's, so it's a hormone that does quite a lot of good things for our body and for our health. But um, if we produce too much estrogen, it's hard for our body and it's, it also makes it more difficult for us to build up muscles. And when we think about the history of evolution, I can say that a high carbohydrate share in our food, that's something we never used to have historically. So my approach is not to say we have to count calories. I've never done that. I'm way too lazy for that. I, I hate counting calories. That, that would just mean stress for me. I mean, it's an exciting idea, but I've never done that. It's too stressful to count calories. So I ask myself, what can I do that's good for my body? Um, and um, there, are like, there are some tips there with that regard that work in 80 or 90% of the cases and you can try them. Um, so that's what I typically try with my clients first because this is something that always works. But what I always say is um, you have to earn carbon hydrates because um, if you sit at your computer all day and if you don't move at all, then you don't deserve carbon hydrates. You're not allowed to consume them. I recently met a natural bodybuilder and this is one exception that confirms the rule. That's why I'm mentioning this here. But, um, you have to listen to your body. If you get a closer relationship to yourself, that's the coolest thing you can get. That's the coolest thing you can get. I can't give that to you. It's the coolest thing you can get. Now, this natural bodybuilder, he says he's on a high carb, low fat diet. I know that some athletes do that, but he really does work out like a madman. And his body can handle carbohydrates very well. And I asked him, what do you normally eat? And he says, well, I mainly eat potatoes. So it's true. Um, it's not always super easy to have the right diet, but just like with the workout, you have to develop an understanding for it. You see, um, I'm a coach. I try to help people understand why they do the things that they do. So I have this kind of self-reflection, and on that basis, they can develop an increased self-efficiency. I don't want to forbid anything. No prohibitions, no, I think I want to forbid. If you want to participate in a bodybuilding contest, if you want to run the New York Marathon, but you're way too heavy for that, well, I don't want to forbid you anything. And I just want you to make conscious decisions regarding your diet as well to make sure you can achieve your objective. That's perfectly fine. But that is a conscious decision you make for a certain period of time. And then you can also play with that decision as well. I mean, I like indulgence. I like enjoying things. But when some men talk about indulgence, they say, well, I like to have a beer every night. That's indulgence. The next day as well. The next day as well. That's the way they enjoy life, having a beer every evening. And then some people are motivated to change their diet. They have a salad with uh, valuable proteins uh, every, for, for lunch every day. They have a salad and then they say, okay, now I've done something good for me, that's enough. I don't have to do anything else. But um, 
as long as he has a piece of cake after the salad, on a regular basis, he will do something very bad for his physical system. And that's what it's all about. It's not about running faster and jumping further or higher. That's not the objective. I mean, of course, I like to become uh, fitter, um, but it's also important just to have a good basis, a solid basis. That's the idea. You are a father or you have two children. So you are in a different position. So I would say take in the area of physical fitness and diet what is good for you. You do not serve a diet, but the diet must serve you because it's a common mistake to subject to diet. If you do not take in diet that strengthens you, it's to no good. Uh, six weeks is a good time, or two months at least. Quite often, I have a sort of a 60 day art. Uh, it's a self efficiency discipline, and after 60 days, many people tell me, Well, I could continue like that. So, it's a matter take a decision. It's not about prohibiting or placing a ban on anything but uh, focus on what you really need and what six tips uh, be, uh, on diet be please uh, try it out to be confident if you want to ask me do so you may even take a picture you can also take a recording uh, probably there is also a recording of this event you may order this and uh, in Instagram models also. I do eat those uh, cereals. Um, I have a girlfriend who prepares a keto cereals for me, where it's only fat and proteins, no carbohydrates. Okay, try it. Check it out. What does it do to you? With uh, uh, so many people, what does uh, carbohydrate do to you? Carbohydrates uh, create insulin. Yes, it's a transient happiness, but uh, in the morning it's not about happiness. It's about uh, getting into going well. Well, I need, I uh, I can eat meat, uh, but please watch out for a good animal husbandry. Well, a coach once told me in the morning uh, eat a. Well, I found it really utterly preposterous or pervert, but it helped me a great deal. I must say. So I would say, check it out. What's good for you? Vegan, uh, avocado, or tofu. Well, uh, you must make sure there is no estrogen. So for fat and protein, well, I will accelerate on our pace. Find out about the. Items that are important for you, a glass of water with lemon and salt. Well, it's so easy. So tip one is good for your tip to take water, some minerals, uh, and uh, so, uh, lemon juice and something like it. So that's it. Uh, so you have achieved a great deal because you have uh, minerals. It, it, it doesn't cost you anything. Point number three. Try to do it. Keep five hours between two meals. Your intestines will have, your bowels will have more time to regenerate. The biggest issue is uh, this uh, insulin insufficiency. It is taken for granted that so many people do not deal well with insulin, which is the most important thing about dietary counseling. They would not have uh, those ups and downs of the glucose oscillations or fasting. Fasting or 16 8 uh, intermittent fasting, it can also be good. It was something that occurred naturally. It's uh, carbohydrates, you can earn them if you do not, well, if you do not move a lot in your demo. I, for my part, uh, use carbohydrates if I have so much tension, serotonin, melatonin. Well, they help you coming to sleep. Uh, Point six, uh, be aware of this. Uh, 
when I took uh, 0.2 liters of wine together with my girlfriend, well, it's, I'm not a friend of drugs or alcohol, but it was so fascinating for me. It was almost a biohack because I was utterly inside my body. I was in high spirits. I enjoyed it. Well, we enjoyed a beautiful time and, and I have no hangover. I am utterly right. I feel okay. So, as bio, to biohacking, well, due to time constraints, interval fasting, well, I mentioned this. If you have a problem with sleeping, if you don't sleep correctly, it's bad for your mood. It's shitty. Sleep is so important. Trust me. For example, work with magnesium. I cannot recommend anything. Check it out on the internet. So many are helpful. If you are panicking, if you are fearful of fear, write it down in your diary. Write it down. You can read it through the morning after. So it is stored. It is somehow externalized. Uh, three things uh, for which you are grateful. A thankfulness diary. This has nothing to do with removal. You can also give space to all the shitty things that are happening. But in everybody's life, there are beautiful things. When I was really down and felt like shit, it was so helpful for me to bring up and muster this energy, to move forward. Uh, coldness is cool. Coolness, for example, frozen water, glacier water in Munich. Limhoff, who broke so many world records. This changes something in your hormones. It's a challenge. You must go beyond your limits. I didn't know anything. When I was so f afraid of falling sick, I went into the cold water and I didn't fall ill. It's good. It's self-efficiency. Be careful with yourself. Don't do any idiotic things. Do it together with a coach, with a therapist, or with a doctor. With all health things, talk to your doctor. I have to tell men. Well, well, men are ring wrestling with men. I do not know whether you know this. So if uh, male bodies are wrestling with each other, it's so stressful, you might think. Well, it's tiring, you might think. Contact, even physical contact with men, I would say. Thank you, male evolution. Thank you, John. Passing, spending time together with men. Vitamin D. Politics. Politicians want to regulate that uh, certain uh, limits uh, for vitamin D are imposed. Well, uh, I have a private uh, health insurance. I pay my, I pay my own physical therapist, therapist. My mom tells me, you are nuts. But I think, well, my health is of utmost of it. But if I cannot get certain things that help me through the winter, like vitamin D, it makes me throw up. I feel sick at the idea of legal reg regulations for vitamin D. Uh, zinc may also be super exciting, but we have also tests from good uh, institutes. Because I had wrinkled uh, in my mouth wrinkles, I ha had certain cracks in blood. Well, I had a deficit in some, as crazy as it might sound, I asked a physician, a colleague of mine, zinc and iron. Well, I did it around for three weeks, it didn't work. Zinc and, and iron, I took it for two days and it was gone. So if you work with the right experts, if you create a sort of network of helpful people, that's something that I would recommend you to do. Uh, the, create your community. Biohacking, the last thing. Breathe. It has a therapeutic effect. We have even a job title, breathing therapist. So participate in the hacker. It will do something to your body. Uh, a certain hack and it's whenever you enter a new room a new building when you open breathe in through you know take the upright posture and while breathing out you keep this upright posture 
tomorrow, well, uh, at the 10.30, we can have also this common breathing exercise. We have also the chat uh, with the video. If everything was possible, where do you want to go? I move in the direction that I'm, I am the pilot that directs his own life. Uh, when is a man a man? There are a thousand uh, answers, but I would say find your own answer. My coach told me if you do what you say, if you feel what you feel, and when you, if you can show what you are feeling, if you are not afraid of attacks from outside, if a man is cr grounded, uh, I think uh, in the English speaking world they call this grounded, centered in oneself. Uh, for me, it's difficult uh, if I feel uneasy. Well, I know athletics is not good for some of them, lift weighting, but basics, posture, breathing, taking care of yourself, these are things that uh, regard everybody. If you do yoga or rock climbing, one thing that is, is uh, tearing, well, no matter whether vertical tear, or horizontal are extremely important yeah. if you practice yoga. I love yogas. Uh, I find them they are utterly cool. It's a cool method to strengthen your body and to become focused. But from the standpoint of sports studies, you need also to strengthen your body force through pulling and tearing. Uh, ask the coach. Uh, Time is up. If you want to enter my uh, in contact, Andreas Ulrich, you can send a me send me a private request on YouTube. I have, I am happy being a part of this. I'm looking forward. Thank you very much uh, for following me with such great attention. I love this expression of warrior of the heart. Go the full way, and I try to do this day in, day out, again and again. Mm -hmm.